there really are tons of these individuals who have seizures in these older adults. It's often mistaken for other things. Memory loss is how they'll present, but then memory loss is a presentation for a lot of things. Uh, and oftentimes they will get misdiagnosed. Now, today with star neurologist Joe Seven, you will find that we talk about the epilepsies, of, of course, but I, I didn't expect that we would include a chat about our passions for commercial aircraft. <laughs> but you will see that this is relevant. Joe speaks of his role with the Federal Aviation Authority, impact, and helping older people, 65 years plus, who are affected by the epilepsies. First of all, it's a pleasure to be here talking to you today. Uh, my name is uh, Dr. Joe Servan. I am a neurologist. Uh, my area of subspecialty, even within the area of neurology, which is a specialty, uh, is in the management of seizures and epilepsy. I practice uh, at Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville, Florida, uh, and uh, reside in that state as well. Uh, I have numerous areas of, uh, of interest and focus, if you will, when it comes to management and treatment of individuals with epilepsy. Uh, I've written a bit on seizures in older adults, uh, but I'm also, my background is that of uh, a Cuban immigrant, Cuban American, if you will. And as such, um, the Latino community and what happens with regards to epilepsy and seizures is important to me as uh, as well. So those are areas of focus that that I share, that I, and if anything, to, to discuss and communicate about when uh, dis- kind of looking at the topic of individuals with seizures and epilepsy in their everyday lives. And my last thing is I also have a focus in seizures and epilepsy and transportation, particularly uh, in the fields and areas of driving and flying. And flying. Tell me a bit about that. I love flying. What, what do you do in the, in the flying area? Well, one of my um, other areas of, of consultancies is um, I also uh, am a, a consultant for the Federal Aviation Administration in the United States as an aviation neurologist. So what we do is um, we look at uh, pilots and if they have um, a neurological issue, try to ascertain if if it's safe uh, for them to fly. I don't make that decision. I just serve as a consultant to it. But it does hit in the area of seizures and epilepsy because uh, if someone does have a seizures, uh, seizure for that matter, there are there, there are consequences uh, should that occur in that position for obvious public safety issues. So it's a high stakes decision uh, in terms of getting the diagnosis right. And it's another area uh, of kind of interest because it's just all about quality of life issues. Thank you. And so much contributes and and varies uh, among quality of life and what matters to people, doesn't it, from person to person. And I imagine if you lose a career, um, but you can't, you have to value the the lives of people on an aircraft. So I, exactly, we we do a session uh, at at various meetings called "Would you fly with this pilot?" And on one level, you're very empathetic um, and even and sympathetic to the pilot who presents with an issue uh, because you realize that they, as you stated it perfectly, you it's career ending uh, if you have a condition like this. On the other hand, um, you also kind of understand that you have to do that because uh, as anyone who will have traveled to that meeting will undoubtedly done it by plane. And uh, you want to make sure that you're not worried about the person in the cockpit uh, when it comes to this issue. This is very close to my heart. Um, I grew up on a commercial aircraft. Really? So I wanted to be a pilot and obviously I couldn't. Because I'd grown up on the aircraft, I was either going to be a commercial pilot, a dentist, or a surgeon, and I couldn't do anything that I wanted to do. And so, yeah, when you were talking about these people who are losing, I I get it. I mean, I didn't lose it, but I lost the dream, and and I know what it's like to, just to be in the industry. And because I used to work for Cathay Pacific as well, but ground staff, 
I've flown them too. <laughs> ah, and experience, okay? And I loved it. Those were were great. I don't I have no post COVID. I've done nothing. I, I I used to fly all the time, uh, but before that, I was I, I I had no trouble. Passport in hand. Yeah, had to get a large one for all the stamps, right? Because yeah. you went. Yeah. Oh my goodness. That, it's pretty empty right now. Well, when you're coming over next time, let me know and I'll take you round. I will. This, not, now I have reasons to. This is very cool. Joe, I love um, the two things that you've mentioned being uh, a couple, well, three things, but the, the pas- first one that you mentioned being one of your passions is to help older people with an epilepsy. Can you tell us a bit about that, please? Well, one of the things that I, it, over the time of my career that I've noticed is just how many um, older patients uh, present with seizures? I, uh, when I originally started my career, I was in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and uh, my patients tended to skew younger. I moved um, not too long after the beginning of my career uh, to Mayo Clinic in uh, Phoenix and Scottsdale, Arizona. And the first thing I picked up immediately in terms of catchment is that all of my patients just skewed much older than uh, what I saw in Philadelphia. And and there's a reason there's more retirees, there's more uh, older adults in the Phoenix Scottsdale area. But the point is, is that it was a kind of a wake up call of like how frequent uh this issue is um how often that there really are tons of these individuals who have seizures in older uh in 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 these older adults but oftentimes it's not appreciated primarily because it's often mistaken for other things uh memory loss is how they'll present but then memory loss is a presentation for a lot of things uh and oftentimes they will get misdiagnosed Um, as having um, a potential Alzheimer's or something like that, when indeed this is actually reversibly manageable. It's not everyone like that, but but there is a a bit of that that occurs. And uh, it it just became to me just by the nature of, of the work, if you will, that it's something that I thought should be highlighted uh, with regards to what's out there, because I think it's very underappreciated. People don't uh, is often think of seizures in a younger person, but they don't often think of it in, in, in someone older. And it's funny because uh, in, in the definitions, it's defined as 65 years and older, but, you know, 65 is the new 55. So, I mean, it's right. hard to know like, <laughs> what, what, what anyone is anymore. Yes, yeah, mate, you've got another 40 years in you, so. <laughs> right, exactly. Older is a, is a very relative term. So that, that's what we're talking about. So how do you make a difference to these people then who are on the supposedly older side? What do you, how do you find that their needs could be different from people who might be a bit younger? Well, there's, there's two big differences that really play into it. Uh, one is if there is, uh, because they're often misdiagnosed for another condition, again, as I mentioned, neurodegenerative conditions, they're much more likely to lose their independence. Uh, mm-hmm. as a result of of a potential diagnosis. So correcting that, is, uh, correcting it and managing it could be uh, the difference between being able to live at home by yourself or with family versus um, the people being shuffled with a wrong diagnosis and waiting for something that's not happening, if you will. Mm-hmm. So it has a huge impact there. On the same theme, um, there's also, because of that concern about the loss of independence, uh, people who are having seizures, uh, and given that these are a group of people that often tend to respond to treatment better than others, uh, driving privileges can often be taken away from them. And that is uh, one way that's important. Now, I know a younger person will worry about driving privileges as well, uh, but there is, uh, in an older person, it's more of a, a, it's almost existential because it's the only thing that keeps them moving around uh, and and independent. And if, if, if you're not living in Manhattan where you have the ability to walk anywhere, and for most of the United States, it's not Manhattan, um, you really are left to a car. And uh, ultimately, uh, that ability to drive is the difference between life and not having a life. Very well put. I, I completely agree. Um, 
It's funny, I, I, my, I may have mentioned this in, in another podcast, but I remember seeing my granny before she passed away and she'd had, she had dementia and she was just lying in her bed and she, she wasn't very uh, neurologically active in the regular sense, shall we say. Um, but she looked at me, well, she attempted to look at me funny and then staring into space. Now, I'm not a neurologist, but it looks so like an absent seizure. Like, and, but the thing is no other, there weren't any clinicians who even noticed that she was doing this and just thought it was because she was old. And maybe it was something else, but it wasn't even checked out as being a potential epilepsy. And I do wonder, especially we did a, um, I had a wonderful chat with um, Eugen Trinker about uh, stroke and epilepsy and the underdiagnosis of it in people who've had stroke, who ten people tend to be older. And it really does make me think, We like you are saying, we need to help older people more than perhaps we already are in general. Agree. I mean, it's it's just what a lot of oftentimes the older you get, you're almost kind of, I mean, I don't want to sound too dark, but sometimes you're just forgotten. It's like, you know, okay, you know, what, what, what are we trying to say? And that's not a right thing uh, when it comes to that. Thank you so much to Joe for his insight into how the epilepsies can impact flight and cabin crew and people aged 65 plus who are also often affected by the epilepsies and need support. Tune in next week where Joe will tell us about his passion and work into helping reduce epilepsy stigma amongst Cuban-American and Latino populations. <laughs>